yeah, that that presentation will be very interesting, Aurora. I can assure you that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> welcome everyone. It looks like we we are very focused team today. It's my pleasure to host Marcus. Uh, Mark, maybe uh, I should leave the introduction to you, Marcus. My name yep. is Salil. I'm a data platform uh, MEP. I'm running Power BI Use the group, group Turkey for a long time. Uh, today's subject is quite interesting one, poor man's data warehouse. There are many ways to create data warehouse in, in Power BI ecosystem, but I'm quite sure you will see different tricks, tips today from Marcus. We are all ears. Okay, thank you. So let us start with my topic, poor man's data warehouse, and yes, when we're talking about data warehouse, we have different opinions what a data warehouse really is. But I like this picture, which is generated with Microsoft Designer, um, with this man who is very happy with this data warehouse instead of these enterprise uh, warehouses in the background you see here are the big towers um, with pipelines all around but it's for him it's enough to have this little warehouse full of data and he can do this his decisions his analysis with this part of this data warehouse and he can control it this is one of the important parts and so we come first to the introduction of myself. I'm Markus Wegener. I'm a full stack Power BI engineer. Actually, I work for BI or Die. It's a German company specialized on BI topics, and I'm working in the department uh, for specialized on Microsoft parts of BI. So Power BI Fabric, name it like you want. Um, I'm a Microsoft MVP for Data Platform. I give me a little nickname, the Power BI Ranger, because I thought uh, it's a good thing to help people to work with Power BI. I'm running an own podcast with a other colleague. Uh, we call them the Data Brothers. So I one of the data brothers and if you scan this qr code you come to my linkedin page and i'm happy to connect with you so don't hesitate go to the site and uh, get in touch with me one uh yeah hint at first, this is not a licensing advice here in this session. I think uh, everybody knows if it comes to licensing, it's very hard to say what's uh, cor the correct licensing. And if you have an audit, the auditor will uh, yeah, explain you what was the right licensing. I only show technical concepts and possibilities so you can see what's possible with this different license and how you can maybe do things without uh, a premium license, just with a pro license. Um, but this is not a uh, licensing advice in this presentation. This is also uh, a hint that show that tells us <laughs> we'll see something different today. <laughs> yeah, but but Microsoft, uh, this is the key message, or uh, this is what Microsoft's as missions statement has is empower every person, every organization on the planet to achieve more. So I think uh, this is something we have to keep in mind when we look on this whole Power BI or BI stack, the self service part, because um, if you see the old world i always told it old world um, my colleague arthur makes this picture it's here on the right side so this is data warehousing enter bi price uh, side this is very old for me when we look in uh, back in the past uh, there was always a bi system there was data warehouse concepts and so on and we have this left side this is more the business user side they try with good feeling with expert opinions um, they are not able to use all this it stuff on from the right side they start with excel based reporting and then there was a gap and in my opinion microsoft starts then uh, something with this power pivot and uh, and power query to bring all these capabilities that we have on the enterprise side 
to the business user and to fill up this gap between the business user and the enterprise users. And so we always have to think about this, that there are things that we can do now with these tools. They are nearly enterprise ready, but business user can do it. We don't need a IP, uh, IT department to all uh, the things. And so this is our mission. And so there could be something which is, um, yeah, something like a data warehouse on the business user side, a smaller, a poor man's data warehouse, not with all the SQL stuff and so on, but uh, a business user can handle it. And if we're talking about the old time, the classic Microsoft BI architecture on premise, we have our data source here on the left side. We had a um, Windows Server where we install all the components on, or maybe more Windows servers. And then we use services like integration services for the ATL process. Then we have our regional database to storing the transform data or to store the data. Then we use the analyze services. Nowadays, it's the tabular model in the analyze services. In the past, it was a multidimensional model. And on top of this, we use the reporting services and um, Excel as front end. Now, nowadays, it or in one of the first steps, it switched to like this simple diagram which a business user can use they use power bi uh, inside power bi they can use power query to transform the data and store the data in their semantic model we have not really a warehouse or a data store in the middle of this the data are directly stored in the semantic model and on top of that they can build their reports and dashboard and it's all hosted in the cloud in the power bi service so it's very easy to use you don't have to think about infrastructure you only have to pay the right license and have to use the free power bi desktop to build your uh, ATL routine and your model and your reports, and then you can upload it to the service. So it's very easy. But then you can came to the point that you want to make some special things, which is come out of this uh, data warehouse time. Something like uh, incremental refresh. Incremental refresh is some uh, pattern that we use to. Um, load data and store it. Normally we have in Power BI this uh, query thing. So every time we load data, we query the source and load the, make a full load of data into our semantic model. With incremental refresh, we have the opportunity to uh, hold the already or old data and just load new data to our data set. Um, this is mostly on transactional data and facts because uh, there we have a timeline and uh, we can store the data. It's not suitable for uh, dimensional data because as the dimensional the data are changing over time and we need their, uh, yeah, our, our uh, unique information. So, so if you uh, if the customer is changed, we always want to have the last information of the customer or, or from our product by history. Uh, it's okay to see uh, or to save the sales data from a year or above. And so um, we can use this to um, yeah speed up our data load. And this part is here uh, in this model. So. We have additional data. Uh, we will delete it, um, existing data from our refresh period. Then is here the restrict history partition, which stores the history data. And after a amount of time, we are also deleting such data. To to make this uh, work in inside of Power BI, we have to use two parameter the range start and range end parameter. These are reservated words. They are case sensitive. They must be uh, from ty uh, type date time. And 
um, I try to make a little uh, picture of this or a diagram how it works. So we have here our semantic model, the PBX file, and if they, this um, PBX file is uploaded to the service, the service will start and control these uh, two parameters and handle for us the dynamic load and partitioning of the um, data load. So this is time for our first demo because I thought I can show you something uh, what you can consider of. So this is the incremental load file. I prepared a Power BI file to load data, but um, one thing we keep or have to keep in mind or we always uh, it's always mentioned in the in the um, configuration of the incremental load is that we need uh, something like query folding because we don't want to load all the data from the source. Um, we want only um, have something or a part of the data and to uh, use this we need this query folding thing and normally we don't or we don't have this query folding opportunity in the file structure but what if you build up such a process so here i have my folder it's on a onedrive i insert different um, files with sales data i pass make partitions of this uh, sales data in this way that i insert um, um, a timestamp in the file name i also have here a file i want to add already here so this will yet now upload it to my onedrive so it's online and i created here um, an import for this uh, sharepoint folder it's here my sales load so we see here i'm uh, connected with a sharepoint connector to my specific um, sharepoint address and this sharepoint connector I go through the steps, so I filter down to um, my specific folder where I inserted my files. So if I refresh the, oh, it's, sorry, it's in German here, uh, but I think it will work. Maybe I switch later. Uh, if you refresh it, you see here are all the CSV files. Um, I extract the file or timestamp from the file name here. It's uh, just a step. I look after the separator inside of the file names and extract it. It's also used an assistant here from the file menu to separate the um, data meter um, before and after the this um, delimiter. I change it to number and now here is uh, my range filter. So I use these two parameters. I already uh, set it up in that way that I start with the name range start. It's a date time parameter and I set it uh, from the 1st of 23 to the 1st of 24. Uh, 24. So so now we only get this first file. Then there was some filtering that it was auto-generated in this part, uh, types. I think it was something remove other columns. Here I add the date modified date. So I can see if a, a file have changed during uh, after my loading. And here we have now the loaded data from one CSV file. So I can hit close and apply. And go, maybe I want to change the language here. Sorry for that. No problem. So where is it? The original setting. I want to switch to English US. 
OK, we load this new. Yeah, we can save it. No problem. So this is basically a way to incrementally load CSV files from a SharePoint folder. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, we want to incremental load this data and uh, the um, I have to show this again. The the important point is that we that we uh, use this uh, date time. We transform it into this number thing so that we can uh, really uh, compare it with this number from the uh, from the, this timestamp from the file, and then we can upload it. And so we have this partitioning thing in our SharePoint file and can incremental load it. And with our settings, we are also available. Uh, uh, it's also possible that we reload. Uh, a partition if the uh, file have changed during or after the load. Uh, we have so, one question, Marcus, regarding the dates. Uh, is, is it possible to make it dynamic instead of instead of? Uh, uh, yeah, the, the thing is that uh, here we have the parameter. So mm -hmm. uh, in this parameter, we will set it for ourselves. In, in this moment, after that, uh, the service will take control of this uh, parameter and will uh, expand the range of dates uh, specific to our setting or from our actual date. The important thing what I have done here is uh, this transformation. Mm -hmm. So we have here uh, the file date and I use the range start <coughs> and Extract the year from the uh, from the date, multiplies by hundred, and add then the months so that I get this uh, or a number which is comparable to this uh, numbers is often a good thing to convert the parameter to the data structure from the source system. So if you, your source systems have something like a date column but it's not uh, formatted as the date, then convert the parameter in that way that uh, you can compare it uh, yeah, correctly with the, with the source and not the other way around. So we have now uh, here all the uh, prepared the data load. And now we can go to our table here in Power BI Desktop. And uh, initialize the incremental refresh. So here we can, um, or here we get the message that um, they can't see that this uh, source is uh, foldable, but uh, they only have to read uh, the files which must, uh, or that they filter the correct file list and then read the files that's in uh, the filtered file list. So we can incremental load these files. Um, I can activate the, uh, the incremental import. I can say in which way we want to achieve the data or for, for how long I want to receive the data. I can decide between days, months, quarters, years, and the number of um, times. That's important because uh, the data model will create partitions for this. And um, after this time period, they will delete the older partitions. Then we have uh, this uh, incremental refresh window where always the data will be uh, refreshed. Um, so I set the uh, peri refresh period for two months. Then here are some features that we can't use because they are premium. Uh, we can say that we only want uh, to refresh complete months so that they uh, um, yeah, wait to the end of the month after he start loading this data. And here the opportunity to say, OK, inside of this refreshing period, I only want to load this data again if I see that there are um, the date have been modified. And so I use this date modified column uh, to check this um, and we only then need to load this data again. I published this already to the service so we can see here is my model. And if we look to this report, 
we see here uh, four files. Um, you already see here on the load date, I had, had another table for the load date so that you can see when I have load this data. And you see this was on the 1st of April. And if we go back to our workspace and start the refresh, it only should take some seconds. Okay. And we refresh the report cache. You see here we have, oh, where's my new file? Okay. The demo got, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but you see uh, they have uh, actualized this uh, file because I have changed it. But uh, let me see if we can handle it here. Here are the four files. Here was last change date, so this was working. A separate extra some file to don't have them in this list don't know why it was not selected now three months april we are in april uh, uh, okay i reload this model again should refresh the files that's great so and we see here on let me see i think the date column is different but i'm not so sure about this yeah normally here the import date of this file should change to the force of force maybe i was it was too fast from the um Okay, here it says it was uploaded. So if we go and view this online in SharePoint, here's the file and here's. Can you, can, can, can you please check the refresh history to see if there is an okay, um, yeah. message or something like that? Thanks, Aurora. So here it says it complete correctly. So let me see. Maybe. I will check this in this way. So we um, go here. I enter the parameter. For a uh, bigger range so this would be the things that be loaded okay yeah um in my logic we only will get the uh, April data next month. So if I load this this way, it should be there. So I will change the end date back to the first. This is something you have to be clear if you make this range filter with greater than and lower the, uh, something, this greater or equal sign should only be on one, one side. I can put it on this side. And the first, yeah, should also work. Close and apply. We see here. in our um, model 
Oh, so something would be wrong. Okay. What's happening? <laughs> but I don't want to spend too many time on this. Uh, please believe me, if we upload it, uh, this uh, filter will um, work and load this data incrementally in this part. So jump to the next topic. And this is hopefully this will work. <laughs> <laughs> Um, is something uh, that I'm not sure if everybody knows this. Uh, you can import data from a semantic model. So um, a semantic model is nothing. Uh, is uh, an analysis service, analysis service service, and you can connect to this service and can query and uh, data from this. So if you oh no. I switch to my demo environments. So let's try this. The first thing I would do is to open um, Power BI desktop file, and I need the connection data to uh, one of my data sets. So I want to use here the one hub and make a live connection. To one of these data models, I would decide I want to use this incremental file load. Just checking here. So we have here our information. The number of rows and here are the files. Here in the model view on the right panel here. Um, you can see that this um, this data set is connected with the live connections, and you see here is all your server and your database. This information you can use to connect to this data model, and um, then you can send a DAX query to this data model and query or import the data in another model. So let's do this. We say get data. Our source is an analysis services. Here we is querying for a server. The server is our server here. You can mark this and then you may click and drop. This works for me. Copying is something which doesn't work. Then I switch here to import mode and I copy the server from this file. So mark this database and drag and drop it to this dialog. And now um, we have to def define our DAX query. Uh, it can be very easy in this way, evaluate. And then the, the name of the table that we want to load. This is here the sales tables, sales, and hopefully it's wrong. Uh, this time it works. Okay, we see here is our. Um, Navigator, uh, the preview of the data, and I want to switch to data transformation. And we see we have now all the lines from our semantic model that we have on the service re imported to this um, file, and we can reuse it. Here, the column names are not so pretty because we see always here the um, the table names before I have prepared a little script. I thought I would want to go through it, but I now will copy it and show you some of the steps to be a little bit faster. So at the moment it's only this line, but I have 
added some new steps. And um, the steps are here. So we make a first query and query a list of or the list of column names which are in this table here on the top. Then we convert it to a table so that we can add a new column. So in the new column, we use the um, insert text between delimiters and find these uh, barks to remove all the text surrounding. Then we add a new column. This new column is, is itself a list. So with this waves box, we say column one and column two. So each of these lines has now the old name and the new name I want to use. And then uh, I execute the uh, um, formula table rename columns. I use the table from the first step here in my steps. And uh, then I um, use the name list, which is here from the step edit custom. Um, to replace the old names with the new names. And you see here we have nice, beautiful names uh, like in the source, semantic models. We can import it here. Have the incremental loaded rows from the old other data sets here in our new data set. And I can publish this to the service. Hopefully, okay, here, uh, demo for, for 24. I have created an import semantic model. Got it. Let's check in the service. This is here. So here's our data set, our um, report. Go to the settings, check the data source and credentials. Okay, here we have to use our uh, OAuthens uh, credentials. We can define the security level, maybe organizational. And if we have set these credentials, we can should say refresh. And you see that we can load here the data directly in the service from another data set. So in this case, you are able to use already imported data to import it, this um, data to another model. I think this could be something which was working also before data flows. Um, the data flows, let me see if I can switch to the presentation. Okay, this was the demo. No, no. Uh, the data flows is something that Microsoft introduced as a data preparation part for a business user. So now we are able to um, use Power Query, load the data with data flows, store it as uh, pre-prepared pre data, and to reuse this um, data flows then in different models and so on. There is, uh, uh, we have there are some difference where we can use something like a power query or a data flow in, in the different pricing models. So uh, here in the top, we have our Power BI Pro license. We have to pay $10 per user per month. And per user per month for $10, we can use the semantic model the incremental load inside of the semantic model, and we can use the data flows. With premium per user, we have the option, uh, or premium per user, it costs $20 uh, per user per month, so it doubles the price. 
we are able to also use the semantic model with incremental load. We can also use the data flows. We have the incremental load inside of the data flows. So now we are able to use the incremental load inside from data flows. We have the auto ML and there are some features like um, uh, we will see it on other pages uh, like the computed entities, linked entities, and and hard compute engines, which uh, use a SQL engine in the background to make faster joins between data inside of these data flows. So this is a premium feature. Um, you can use it with premium per user. I don't add premium as capacity here because actually they are equivalent with the fabric uh, possibilities. Um, Which means very expensive. Yeah, here. <laughs> start the yeah, it's very expensive. Yeah, and um, there's some feature, it's called data marts. Um, it's also available in the premium, but uh, still in public preview. And here we have an SQL endpoint to our data. So it's uh, the next step from data flows. It's data marts. It, it gives you a SQL endpoint and something um, a default data set where you also has a semantic model inside. Then we have Fabric. Fabric could be interesting because you have uh, different types of licensing. Something uh, is the pay as you go model. Um, there you can buy a F2, that's the smallest capacity, and pay it per hour. Then it will cost you, uh, I don't know, uh, a half of a dollar. But you also need the user licenses uh, to access the data set and the reports. You can um, buy this um, F2 capacity with a reservation for uh, per month for a year. I think you have to, uh, to make this reservation. Then you will pay um, nearly $200 a month, but you need additional the user license to access uh, the reports and data sets. And at the end, we have this uh, $5,000 capacity. It's the equal event to the Power BI Premium capacity. And um, it's called now F64. Yes, and uh, yeah, this is very uh, expensive. And then you get all the, or with Fabric, uh, we extend the possibilities inside of the data preparation part. Um, when we think in kind of a power query with the data flow gen 2 and we can store our data into a um, lake house or a warehouse, uh, but you get more things like the data pipelines, like the um, notebooks so that you can use Python and Spark uh, on this data. But um, yeah, we have to see what we can do in the future with the F2 capacity. But in our session, we will sh look at the Power BI Pro and Premium segment um, and here in this Power BI Premium per user licensing. So uh, Microsoft has published this usage scenario. So if we think in the advanced data preparation part and think in, in the kind of warehousing, it's possible to make here um, an area where we make the staging. So we load the data from the source and uh, store it in our data flow. Then we make the second step and make the data transformation. Here it's very usable to use the linked tables and computed tables or entities in both, uh, but these are premium features. Um, if we use premium, we can change such data flows. So if the first data flow start, the other will 
be triggered and run after the first um, data flow. And then at the end, we have our final data flow in, inside the workspace where the user can use it for their uh, data models. So this is the uh, conceptual picture from Microsoft itself. And what I have seen is something that you can use or if you try to copy your model, I think I switched to, to a demo and then we can look to this chart again. So normally if you think you have started with a project inside of Power BI Desktop, I have prepared this compute entity PBX file. And inside this um, model, we have some queries and we have combined these queries and want to load this in our data model. I show you here. Yes, my SharePoint connector um, is uh, my single point. I disable the load. Then we have a product table. This product table is combining the uh, or merged with the product subcategory here. And we have the subcategory as separate table and the separate table is also or has also a merge here on the right side uh, to the a product category. So we can mark all these queries here. Let's say copy, go to our Power BI service. I've prepared a workspace here, data flows. I say I want to make a new data flow, define new tables. I often then start with a blank query and only say next so that I get this Power Query editor window. And then you click on the left query panel and I press uh, Ctrl V. And it will copy all the um, queries from my clipboard to, to this um, browser window or here. And you see here, I can remove this empty query. So I had set up or configure here my connections. This should work. And now here we have our problem. Um, we combining two tables and it marked as a premium required to refresh this data load. This is because Microsoft uh, used the premium capacity to load the uh, we start here from the set category. Here we combine the first tables to load the product category and the product subcategory and is combining this data on the premium capacity. So it's not combined during the data load itself, it's combined it on the premium capacity. If we want that they um, um, combine this during the data load we have to disable the load for um, this table so we disable this load and you see here the uh, lightning bolt is disappearing so now it can do this transformation um, during the data load and not on the premium capacity and i would then go here and rename or make an underscore in the name and make a reference and what and this reference could load also this product category table but now it's hitting or touching the source system two times once when it loads the product category and once when it loads the subcategory for the product uh, we can do the same thing here with the product category we disable the load, we rename it, make an underscore, and make a reference on it.
And in this case, we are now able to load the uh, same information in our data flows. We receive a product table, a product category uh, table, and a subcategory table. And they also make this merge inside the, of the data load, but we don't uh, need to use a premium capacity or a premium license for this. So I can say set else. And say computed this. Okay. And that is what I'm showing here in this diagram. So if you make this load um, directly, then it will. Uh, need a premium capacity or a premium license because the data were merged on the premium side. If you disable this um, table for the load and just make a reference on it and combine it, these tables during the data load, you can also use it with a pro license and have or um, as data result, the data result is the same. Another thing is if you want to reduce uh, a table which already or is already loaded in the data flow, then you uh, get a linked table and a linked table. I, I don't know what Microsoft is doing in the background. I, I think it should uh, directly copy the data, but you can't transform it here. But this will also require premium. If you disable the load, inside this data flow in your transform data flow and make a reference that it also worked with pro. I would show you this in the environment here. So this means I start with a new data flow. I want to use a link to table from another data flow. It should be no given optimization account. Come on. I try again. Yeah, so it should look like I go to next. I then should I see my workspaces. I can link to one of these. Um, data flows uh, let us see this is our table which we load before transform on that data on transform data we see here this is chain this is this chaining which is a uh, premium due for us um, so that this uh, data flow will be reloaded if the first uh, data flow is triggered but if we only want to use this table in our um, data flow, we can disable the load and make a reference on it. Okay, we have to rename it so that the namespace is free. And now we can load this product table into this data flow without a premium license. So because um, now we don't use the premium feature that uh, this um, data load is chained, chained we had to um, schedule the refresh separately uh, in the right time. Uh, to the presentation okay okay yeah. um data flows comes with uh, additional benefits so um we have the option that we can um use um the different um or the first things are 
that is a reusable ETL package, something which is uh, like a data warehouse. We want to uh, have our ETL, or our transform data stored and reuse this. Um, we make this decoupling from the data source also something that we want inside of a data warehouse so that we don't always touch the source system. We load the data into our storage and then uh, we only uh, connecting to this stored data. Um, we can use different schedules. This is important because maybe we want to have different refresh times uh, specific to our data source. We have the possibility of incremental refresh, but this is here a premium feature. We can use the um, common data model in the other data lake. So um, actually, when we use the data flows, they are store the data inside of um, our Power BI tenant, but we are, have no access to this uh, data only via the uh, data flows. If we paying for an Azure data lake storage account, uh, we can uh, connect this to our data flow or to our work directory and then we can uh, directly access the data in type of a model JSON where the transformation and data structure is uh, descriptive and um, on the other side the data in the CSV format. We also have some premium features like Enhanced Compute Engine. This is this uh, SQL cache stored data to improve the performance during queries. We, then we have the possibility to make direct queries di directly on the data flow, something I don't really use so much. Then this opportunity is to use the computed entities so load the data to the data flow and reuse them directly inside of the data flow and not only on the load of the query. We have the possibility to use the linked entities and the incremental refresh. And this brings us or brings me <laughs> to this uh, idea. So what if we have a premium per user license with a premium per user um, workspace? so that we load the data with uh, Marcus, our... Yep. Sorry, may I interrupt? Can, can we go back to previous slides? Yeah. Yeah, uh, currently data flows are available in Dataverse, Power Apps, Power BI, Fabric, and currently, for example, if you would like to use computed entities or linked entities for Power BI data flows, mm -hmm. then you need Pro uh, so, sorry, premium license, premium per user license at least. But the Power Apps Dataverse data flows uh, offer uh, these features for a lower cost. Okay. Yeah, so, but uh, so, so but instead of using Power BI data flows, you should use the Power Apps data flows if you need to make things a little bit faster. I've copied a link for Turkish speakers, but uh, it's a recording, so you, you, you can see the, see, see the things. If you need uh, computed entities or linked entities or enhanced compute engine, then use the Power Apps data flows. Okay, These features but, are available for a, for a uh, less, lesser cost. So in Power Apps, you have to decide the, uh, oh, there's a, I think there's a dia dialogue and mm -hmm. you have to store the data in this analytical part yes. there because the other way you use the dataverse mm -hmm. tables and they are expensive but there are other uh, features that, which are interesting so the the part is and i it was a pitfall for me mm -hmm. i use the data flows inside of power apps and i thought oh wow these are very slow because i was inserting the data into a dataverse and then the dataverse logic make uh, uh consume the data row by row in mm -hmm. the in if you use the analytical store or the Azure Data Lake store, which is something uh, behind the scenes, um, then it will um, be much faster. But a good point that you can use uh, data flows from this side. Yeah. And so the idea is um, to use uh, the 
premium features to uh, prepare the data with the uh, data flows in a premium workspace to store this data in the uh, CDM folder on the Azure Data Lake Gen 2. And after the um, data are stored in the CDM file, a folder, then um, we want to reconsume the data product um, via the it, uh, data flow dialog on the pro side of a workspace. And then we can use this for data sets and reports. So it could be an opportunity to make the heavy lifting inside a premium workspace, bring the data at rest here in the CDM folder and consumes this um, data with a pro workspace because the direct connection from a um, from a pro workspace to a premium per user workspace wouldn't work as far as I know. So if you try to um, load data from a data flow from a premium per user workspace directly in a pro a workspace, it shouldn't work or it wouldn't work. But we can test it next. You know, we go to the demo, and I will show you what I have prepared. So we start on the data lake and two side. Here is my premium per user workspace. I have set up the Azure connection here to a Azure Data Lake 2 storage account. So here is my Azure uh, environment, and here I have created a storage account with, I think it's important is the, um, it's the hierarchy uh, thing, here, hierarchy namespace that this is enabled. So then you have a Data Lake Gen 2 workspace, and I go to the dialog and connected this uh, workspace with um, with the storage accounts. Then I created a data flow. Here's a data flow. We can edit it. It's very usual. I just connect a, a free OData service from service odata.org select one table, the invoice tab table, and save this data to the workspace. But now I'm in the premium licensing, so I can use uh, or would be able to use something like the KI or machine learning models and so on and create additional data on this um, or during this data load. If the, we can, I will try it. Um, Hope it will run this time. So we're querying the data, and the data should be saved in our data lake storage. Hopefully, finger cross. Yeah. Um, you can then can you can use something like the Microsoft Azure Storage Explorer. Here we can. Go to the file system. I think it was the storage account. Here's our blob container. Inside the blob container, you find a folder for Power BI. Here is my workspace name. Here is our data flow name. And now you see here is the model JSON. I think we can here make a preview. And you see here on my JSON. Here are all the informations about the tables, the output format, it's a CSV file, uh, the last load, all the metadata are here. And I think also here, uh, there must be uh, somewhere there must be the transformation of the Power Query um, are here. So this line describes how to load the data. Then we see here there are snapshot folder. So for all the change we have made, we get a, a snapshotted model JSON. 
and we have here our invoice folder with uh, the snapshot of the data load. So this was a snapshot from my testing. And here we have a snapshot which is just actualized here. And the model, actual measure, model JSON um, is referencing on this file. So the data flow knows that we will find here the new data. We go to the model JSON and say that we want to copy the um, data file, uh, this endpoint URL. And then we can go to our pro workspace. And here we start with the data flow. We can say that we want to attach a common data model folder, enter the name. Uh, and you see now we have here this data flow. We can't edit it, but if we go to our Power BI desktop, I will close some of these. Get more resources on this. VM. So last file. So we can get source. We want to load the data flow. From our workspace. From our data flow workspace and here is the demo. Environment and here we see the invoice data is there. To double check. This here is the. Um, Premium workspace with the CDM. Let us check if we can load the data and publish the to a pro workspace. Maybe if something had changed. For my time, so we want to quantity by country. We publish this save PPU data flow. And I put it to my data flow directory. The flows I hope it was right. Yeah. Should be here. So now the data which are in are uploaded directly from Power BI Desktop. Here for the credentials. Okay. And refresh. Okay. Maybe it's no longer this restriction. We will see. I will let it run in the background and switch to the demo and introduce the last thing. And this is um, we have talked about separation. So in the data warehouse, um, if you have uh, multiple sources, 
um, you can think about uh, to load or to make a common format for the source and to come uh, to make a general reporting over all uh, both combina uh, sources like here a multi-company report so i would use in this scenario the data flow to um, make a common format for the company one to load the data and to load the data from company two in this data flow and then combine this data in one semantic model and so because we have separated these um, a data transformation task we can schedule them separately if one job failed we only have to reload one source again or one company again and don't have to um, uh, load the whole process again just only this part okay at the data uh, or semantic model side we have uh, to load both uh, again but uh, from the point of failure we have here in the data flows more control about each data load. So let me see if see oh, here's my taskbar. So this is still running. Maybe look in the setting in the refresh history. Oh, still in progress. Okay. I thought there should be an error message it's so it will say that we can't load uh, from a premium workspace to a pro a workspace but maybe still running okay um i have prepared two workspace one data flow it's set it up on um on adventure works data so when we go through it you see here, I have created a common uh, schema for my data, for my customer data, for my product information and for my order information. All this data come from an SQL database, oh, Azure SQL database, okay. So we should see here some data it's a very small um sql azure sql uh, database from the capacity side so it's needs some time to get up but here now we have it we have the customer data we have the product data and the order data we close this. No change. And I have the another data flow. It's on the Northwind uh, company. I extract the data here. You see, I have the same structure. These times, uh, the data will be loaded from an OData's open data source, and will. Uh, get in the same format and with this maybe i delete this and show you last thing by um combining this data you can go uh, in this way that we have now the same structure. So my starting point is one of these two uh, data flows from a company um, in, in the part of sales. Maybe we, name, we use the product table. I go to transform data. And you will see we have now here two steps, the source step and the navigation step. And in the first, we connecting, make our connection to the power platform. In the second step, we querying the product table. In the background, we have more steps. In the background, they selecting the workspace, they select a, a specific uh, grid for the uh, workspace, they 
selecting a specific grid for the data flow ID, and then they uh, get the table or the entity of the product. We can remove the steps and go, uh, I don't know if you see it, but here the data column, these are links and folders, and you can follow these links. And the, the nice thing of this is um, we can go here step by step, and uh, do, during this step-by-step uh, -step navigation, we can use uh, the columns to filter them. So we can make this more generic in that way that we say, okay, here, I know that all the workspace starting with DF begins with are my data flows uh, workspace. For so I have both North Winds uh, and adventure works. If I reducing the columns to data space and workspace name, I can expand this data area and say, okay, I need to know the data flow names which are inside these uh, workspaces and I need the data behind this. So we go to the next level. Here I can say, okay, I know I need all the data flows um, which have sales data. Oh, something went wrong. Contains. Then I have these two uh, data flows inside these two workspaces. I can expand this again. Entities and data. So I see all the tables inside uh, this data flow. Okay, I say I want to, I can select it now here. I want the product table and expand here the information. Yeah, I, I, I use a And now I have the product data from my Northwinds data flow and my AdventureWorks data flow in in one table combined it and all uh, because we transformed the data earlier uh, uh, we uh, they have the same column structure and are uh, join it together and the cool thing is if we would add a new company in the same um, format with the same naming it will also add to this uh, to this uh, query and will also load it to this uh, combined data set or combined uh, information what you can do next because uh, maybe you have is a problem with multi-company that you have um, th th this problem that is not unique. The keys are not unique because they are maybe the same. Uh, they used in the same product ID. You can try to extract a prefix from the workspace name. We can remove these columns later, but you can say here, okay, I need a, a prefix column. Uh, to really use this column and say extract range. I think it was three one. So we have the N for North Vines and the A for Adventure Works, and then we can say, okay, we want to use these t uh, two columns and merge them together as a uh, Company product ID is a separator. And then we should get, where is it here? Here is it, uh, an identifier where we can separate the numbers uh, pair a company and we can do the same on the pack data and other dimensions uh, to get this big model over both companies. 
let us look at the service. What? Where is it? Oh, OK, here I was in this window. Data flows. OK, here we get an error. And here, by to read premium per user information. Um, I think this is here the, the information that you can't, or here is 403 forbidden, that we are not able to query directly premium content to an pro workspace. So I think in in mind with the, the concept of the come data model folder uh, structure from Microsoft, you can use this way to go around uh, the specific pitfall and can get the data to a pro workspace via the Azure Data Lake too. So this was all my demos. I have only one slide here. It's from Ralf Pranger. Uh, about thinking in uh, kinds of t-shirt sites for your BI solutions. So maybe you start with a small site and then you are growing and you do add more components to your BI solution. So starting with a data source and maybe a BI front end tool, then the semantic layer. I think in Power BI we have both uh, the front end and semantic layer. And after a while, you can add this persistent stage data lake or data flow part. And if you are really big, then you have your data warehouse. But I think there's a, a lot of ways where a poor man can work like a data warehouse with Power BI. And so thank you for persisting. And now I'm open for questions. Thanks a lot, Marcus. Thank you for your time. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Uh, that was a hell of a session. Uh, for the for the first part, demo gods were not with us. That happens sometimes. Yeah. Uh, and performance-wise, sometimes I I feel very strange be, be, behavior with the same data flow, with the same workspace. Uh, I don't know what's happening in the background, but Microsoft is changing many things very frequently. And yeah. One day it works, the other day it doesn't. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, uh, um, we only know the monthly updates from the Power BI desktop. But during the meantime, they are preparing things for the next update and so on and so on. And yeah, it's, it's really funny. I I don't have so many looks to the data marts in the past. Mm -hmm. And yesterday day, I think I looked again to the data marts and see that the uh, yeah, the whole front end has changed. It looks more like the fabric sites. Mm -hmm. And I think the data marts are the first steps from Microsoft in this way to fabric as some yeah, usability tests or something else. And yeah, it is it is interesting to see <laughs> what happens exactly. in the future. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we are witnessing very very fast and strange sometimes days. <laughs> yeah, but in the older day, I, I remember we always say never change a running system. And I think yeah. you know oh. how often you have very old databases with very old uh, versions. And sometimes we are in a customer situation and want to use some features and see, oh no, I don't <laughs> want to lift up this database to this version where I can use this feature. And this is something which is really cool in Power BI. Uh, if we use the service, we are all on the nearly same version. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Okay. Any question from the audience? Please don't be shy. You can unmute yourself and ask your question directly if you have one. It seems there is no question. Uh, it was a very, very, very good uh, dem demo, Marcus. Uh, thanks a lot for joining me today. Let me. Oh, yeah. Oh. Aurora, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, see you at the next meetup. Thank All you, right. Marcus. Talk to you later.